News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And a wonderful morning to you. This is Newsline, live as always from the News First studios in Dawson Street in Clambo. And uh, this morning, uh, which has turned out weather-wise to be quite a nice day, um, it's dry anyway. And uh, this morning, joining us uh, is uh, Dr. Sudarshini Fernando Pile, uh, Member of Parliament and uh, here, a uh, former uh, State Minister of City Planning. But is, uh, she's here to discuss current affairs and politics with us. Very good morning to you, Doctor. Good morning. And we really do appreciate you staying on from Pathikadar for this program. Um, Dr. Fernando Pille, you are now, you're one of the group of 16. Um, why, why leave? Actually, uh, we were not very comfortable within this national government. Yeah. Actually, the, we joined the government based on uh, a decision taken by my party, the SLFP, yeah. the Central Committee meeting. Uh, that was because the political system was a bit controversial and a, a bit complicated. Right. Uh, because the president is, uh, was given the, uh, the responsibility of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, although he uh, was put forward forwarded as the common candidate where the the UMP, the JUP, the TNA plus the breakaway SLFP supported him. He he feel he he actually campaigned against the SLFP candidate. Hmm. And one uh, once he emerged victorious, uh, the former president, uh, His Excellency Mahindra Rajapaksa, handed over the SLFP to the the uh, Mr. Majipala Sirisena. Right. Uh, uh, and then uh, thereafter, um, the incumbent, the president, the, um, he uh, proposed put forward a proposal to the Central Committee uh, uh, seeking permission to form a, a, a national government with right. the SLFP. Of right. course. Uh, in the first hundred days, it was a minority government where the UMP had only about 40 odd members. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but thereafter, we uh, went for parliamentary elections and UMP polled 106 uh, seats and the uh, UPFA got only 95. So right. the president had no alternative but to get simple majority, uh, he uh, formed the national government and we, uh, because of the decision taken by the party we acted you know we were part of the government but yeah. within the government since we were with the U UMP it was you know the our policies were different the policies did not match mm. uh, so therefore we had a lot of issues and we also uh, the uh, this term uh, was to expire last year in September mm -hmm. and it was raised at the Central Committee meeting and then uh, This is the, the two year agreement Two year agreement and then we were not ready to go beyond the two years but then we were asked to wait for another six months until the 31st of December last year uh, after which we could take a decision but then thereafter the local government uh, elections were uh, to be held in February so then we were asked to wait until the elections and after the elections, a no confidence motion supported by the JO and the SLFP was uh, presented in parliament. And mm. the SLFP from the very uh, start uh, was in support of the no confidence motion to remove the prime minister mm. and then to form a, a, a different government. Uh, but at the last minute, some of the SLFPs, they defected and the 16 of us voted in support of the no confidence motion. Do and you think why do you think these people who defected, defected? Uh, I, from the beginning the discussions were held to, you know, change the Prime Minister. Hmm. So even the day, two days prior to the no confidence motion, a group of SLFPs requested the Prime Minister to step down. And do you, do you believe that there was a real prima facie reason for you all to ask him to do that? Yes, of course, uh, of the many reasons uh, included in the no confidence, the ma majority of uh, uh, the, uh, you know, it was... There were about 15, 15 items. 15 items and of the 15, the majority of items are relevant to the central bank issue. The uh, bond scam. The bond scam. Uh, 
uh, where uh, the SLFP also appointed a committee at the CEC mm. uh, to look into the bond scam and they gave, gave certain recommendations. One mm. was to appoint a presidential task force, mm. uh, presidential committee. So, uh, and you know, most of the recommendations given by that committee was also included in the no confidence motion. Mm. So that is why we went ahead and we voted with the, you know, in support of the no confidence motion. And um, do you, do you, as you personally, um, do you, do you feel when you think about it and when you read about it and on the balance of probabilities, do you feel that the minister who was in charge of the central bank at the time, the prime minister, do you feel that he's not delivered, that he has not acted professionally as a minister? Yes. You do you personally I, feel? That? I personally feel because you know uh, he, he when he was asked to remove him. Yeah. Uh, so there was a president had to do it sort of you know without his consent. Yeah. And soon after he was removed, he was give, offered another uh, you know big post. Yeah. So if you uh, are really genuine, uh, you should have uh, some sort of inquiry against him. Mm. Uh, I mean, there's a major allegation, like you know, the bonds come huge sums of money yeah. in all. Of course, you have to always have a uh, inquiry, but that was not held, and uh, he was offered another post. Yeah. Uh, in the Prime Minister's office or some other yes. project. And, it's and always never been made and, clear. And then the, the whatever statements uh, made by the Prime Minister in Parliament, he yeah. said uh, uh, so and so was going for a wedding, I can always get him down if wanted. Yeah. He was sort of uh, protecting. We felt yeah. that the Prime Minister was protecting the, the, the former central bank governor. Mm. So uh, the people feel that the Prime Minister has been sort of, you know, uh, safeguarding or protecting the central bank former governor. Hmm. So now uh, we don't have him. Two people are in custody, they are in remand, but yeah. the main culprit is not there. Yeah. And, and then how did you feel when, uh, when you were, were during the proceedings, when you found that the Prime Minister was uh, summoned or invited? Uh, the English language is too quaint, but let's just say he was asked to come there. How it was done, politely or not, is a different uh, thing. Unfortunately, I was not uh, part of not? that. Okay. No, but uh, a group of uh, senior politicians. Uh, but what do you all feel? I mean, that you know, he he was not questioned by the people by Dapula de Oliveira or Yasanta Kodagada, who were questioning the others, cross-examining. And uh, in, we, were, we were denied this opportunity because we felt, uh, as members of the public, as I certainly as member of the media and uh, as member of the public felt, that the Prime Minister was being treated with kid gloves on. And uh, it is pointless. Uh, the, the, the level of respect and deference being shown to the Prime Minister uh, in these proceedings was uh, completely it not... Was in favor of the Prime Yes, Minister. it was in favor of the Prime Minister and yeah. it was quite different yeah. to the robust uh, questioning that took place of uh, the Minister of Finance um, or at the time Foreign Minister uh, Ravi Karunayaka. So it's, it's understood because the, the, the Attorney General is under, you know, a government servant. Yeah. Under this present government, so uh, under the uh, although not directly under the prime minister, but uh, they are also appointed by. You see, so the, they, they, uh, they may not uh, adopt the same sort of independence in uh, uh, questioning uh, the. No, prime no, Doctor Fernando if you, if we list, if we look at what it is, hmm. um, eight days after we this network put it out on. Uh, the mass media through uh, television and radio hmm. uh, about the bond scam. Hmm. Uh, the Prime Minister felt it of sufficient national interest, I trust, hmm. that that is why he came to Parliament on the 17th of March. Hmm. And he said hmm. that he insisted, hmm. I insisted on the change. And <coughs> Thereafter, the governor, the former governor, Mahendran, in the court proceedings, says 
that he only followed the But instructions the of the Prime Minister. Yes. Now, it is the Prime Minister's insistence hmm. that changed it. Hmm. Now, I find hmm. that there is a controversy about the GDP figures hmm. and the growth rates. Hmm. And the Auditor General is hmm. making a statement in the Finance Ministry uh, accounts, hmm. the annual return of the Finance Ministry, hmm. in which he says that he doesn't agree with the debt figure hmm. because they've left it. And he lists the ones out. Hmm. And he then says, therefore, it's 81%. Hmm. But we then find that a statement from the governor of the central bank says that he's not responsible for the figures hmm. because the figures come from the Department of Census and Statistics. Hmm. But we now then notice, we can't help but notice, that the Department of Census and Statistics comes under the Prime Minister's Prime Minister. Ministry. Yeah. Now I'm wondering, did the Prime Minister insist on those numbers being changed. That's what I mean. Because he insisted yeah. about the bond. Yeah. Did he insist? Hmm. Because as you say, there's a, hmm. there's a public servant involved hmm. there. Hmm. And uh, with all due respect to Dr. Sathra Singer, hmm. his, his promotions, his foreign travel, hmm. everything is exactly. dependent on his boss, the minister. Hmm. So when we look at it, all of this, uh, do it you could. still feel? It could. But do you feel that in light of all these things, mm. and the, the uh, Minister Malik Samarawikrama and the Prime Minister both uh, came forward and said that there is no loss to the state from the bond scam. But they're forgetting, or deliberately, obviously deliberately, not talking about the balance six billion, which was made in the last bond scam, mm. uh, the bond issue on the 31st of March 2016. Mm. And they're just going on about the 12 billion that hmm. is stuck within the system. Hmm. Uh, the interest is being still played on that. Hmm. I know that it's not being yeah. pushed out. But in light of all this, why is it that the Prime Minister is still the Prime Minister? What moral is, right does he uh, have? <laughs> that is the question I also can't answer. That is why we wanted uh, to change in, uh, the no confidence motion. Yeah. Uh, but we had the numbers at the beginning. Yeah. We were very confident that we were able to vote him out. Yeah. Uh, ideally, because ideally, you know, uh, the Prime Minister always follows the Westminster system. Yes. But we thought we will, uh, he will step down yeah. following the Westminster system, but he yeah. never did. Yeah. So that is why we wanted to sort of remove him uh, through the no confidence motion. Yeah. But uh, unfortunately at the last minute, some of the SLF peers, they, they did not come to vote. Yeah. And we knew we were going to lose, but yeah. still despite the fact that we were going to lose, we continued with the opposition and we voted in support of the no confidence motion to remove the Prime Minister but unfortunately we did not have uh, adequate numbers so therefore we after we voted against the government while being in government yeah. we thought it was not ethical for us to remain in the in government and we stepped down from all our portfolios and then joined crossed over to the opposition and um, but yet this national government is carrying on it is carrying on so we, we isn't that a bit of an anomaly uh, because Uh, a national, it's not really a national government. In my mind, a national government conjures up everyone coming together, working for the one country, not where one part sitting down there, yeah, uh, pouting. Only a small fraction of the SLF yeah. and the UMP, but there are so many other parties in the, sitting in the opposition. Right. Now then, I want to bring your uh, attention and ask you about your reaction to the China story, the so-called China story. Uh, New York Times and now the Chinese Embassy clarifies that uh, the uh, article was full of political prejudice and completely inconsistent with the fact. Um, but uh, Dr. Fernando Pillay, I, I couldn't help but notice that the Chinese Embassy has not denied giving this money. I don't believe it hmm. uh, because the facts have been brought out. Uh, about three years after the um, presidential election. Yeah. So if there were allegations, they would, should have brought it soon after elections. But what if, but what if they've only stumbled upon the facts now? 
maybe uh, I think uh, the former prime former president also has denied. Yeah. So the government can hold an inquiry and yeah. s- see whether the facts given are correct. Yeah. Uh, they can always initiate an inquiry. I think even the former president had requested. Yeah. He also may take legal action because if it is done, uh, you know, uh, maliciously, it's a great, you know. Uh, his image is being sort of distorted and you know during uh, election there are different people you know coming to fund so uh, that's a different uh, so uh, if it's true what's wrong if uh, are you saying then that there is no wrongdoing no to accept the money of course the funds have to be utilized for their campaigning yeah. purposes yeah so uh, i mean that is a normal practice in the yeah. slp ump i mean any party during uh, uh, elections uh, they are funded by different groups of course you should be able to sort of you know uh, to be accountable as to you know what you got and how you spent it uh, so that is uh, i mean there's no law there's no ceiling on the amount you could spend yeah. that uh, well, what, did you, what do you think you spent on your own campaign maybe about um, uh, uh, 100 lakhs really That's my uh, the last campaign so and those monies were got by there were supporters supporters they brought in uh, sort of 10 uh, you know small amounts Bigger some brought about up to about 100000 so we had a, you know, we had a list of... Were they anonymous, this list? No, there weren't any anonymous donors, donors. but of course... But you they, knew who they were? I knew who they were. Do you still know? Yes, okay. I have the list with me. So, you you can say, well, look, I have got this and this is what I did. Yes. Okay. Do you think the former president will be able to do the same? Uh, I think he... Most politicians. Most, most politicians should be able to. Right. Um... But do you see a, a, a moral deficiency in uh, getting money from a sovereign power? But not knowing the facts, yeah. I will not comment yeah. because uh, the former president also has denied and yeah. he, he has already, I think, seeking legal advice. Yeah. So not knowing the the uh, the true facts, the uh, the, uh, the 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 details of the the transactions etc i will not comment about but do you it. think it's significant that the chinese embassy does not actually deny but they the may so they they also must be you know investigating and they might come out with the uh, with their sort of comments later on mm. the day but accepting that the fa- the statement says that the article is full of political prejudice mm. and yeah. and inconsistent with the facts and uh, uh, Member of Parliament Nama Rajapaksa is quoted in the Ceylon today mm. as saying that the, he, he is accusing the FCID and the CID mm. of leaking false information to the New York Times. Mm. Uh, what do you have to say? Do you think he's got a point there? Mm. Or I is will it a not comment because I don't know the entire story right. and the entire facts. But I think that this uh, has come up after three years so I, right. I'm a bit suspicious about the motives and you know because yeah, it's suspicious because uh, of the timing. because it's uh, that of the timing because it's three years after the presidential and another one and a half to two years more for the next presidential election so this is a political game I right. I, I do not believe about the accusations right um, is that purely because these accusations are being made against members of your uh, no, party. not because I mean anybody. I mean, if uh, there are allegations, I mean you should be able to come out with the facts and prove it. Indeed. I mean you can make allegations, but you, you should be able to uh, sort of prove it and give uh, uh, you know uh, accurate uh, information. Now then, if we move on a little bit, uh, what happened to your? Um, everybody thought we'll have a lady speaker. Or deputy speaker what happened uh, actually it was the first time a lady's name was proposed to the post of deputy chair you know right. it's a high post in parliament normally you know ladies are names are not even considered for such post it's, it's history but uh, this post Do, are was, you angry with that kind no, of history? no i'm not sorry are you angry with that kind of history where they 
they ignore the uh, yes, ladies yes of course yes the but uh, uh, to be honest there had been very few ladies representing parliament okay. it has fluctuated between 10 to, and 13 13 right. had been the highest yeah uh, but i consider it a great you know it an honor bestowed on the ladies uh, right. to, at least being considered uh, for that post but uh, the UMP thought it was a post uh, belong to the government faction. Right. Because it was held by the SLFP. Yeah. Uh, when Honorable Tilanga Sumatipal resigned, he, he, he casually asked whether I was interested. I said, no, I have already uh, resigned from my portfolio. I was not interested. And then, the, since this post belonged to the SLFP, uh, Honorable Angajan Ramanathan's name was proposed. Mm -hmm. But then the TNA had objected. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, uh, our group uh, su had suggested my name with mm -hmm. the blessings of the former president, uh, Mr. Rajapaksa. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, when my name was uh, also uh, proposed, the uh, UMP uh, fielded another candidate. Mm -hmm. They said it belonged to the government. So we went for, uh, had an election and UMP also lost their simple majority, they got only 97, whereas I got 53. We knew that we uh, we were not able to get the, uh, the, the votes mm -hmm. if there was a, uh, you know, election. It uh, came to that. Came to that, yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I consider it a great honor because the lady's name was proposed for that high post. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're getting lots of sort of questions from people. Uh, uh, <coughs> uh, okay. Uh, okay, we'll ask you this question. Interesting program. You talk so much about campaign funding. Has no one questioned that the UNP common candidate could also have been funded from outside by people who were hell bent on regime change? Yeah, of course, there would have been. Because there were a lot of, you know, I have read that there were a lot of international, you know, the people interested in yeah. changing the regime. Uh, so, uh, probably the common candidate would have been uh, funded by... Some uh, years ago, the coffee shops of uh, Colombo uh, were, I'm sure there are coffee shops elsewhere as well, but mm -hmm. I wasn't there. I was in Colombo. Um, some years ago, there was a claim that uh, RAW, the Indian Intelligence Arm, gave uh, the United National Party 400 million or upwards. How true do you think that was? Did, did you hear those stories? I have heard yeah. that, you know, the, uh, the, the, our neighbor was also very interested in regime change. Yes. So, but I don't know. These all, you know, here say uh, information. So yeah. I, I, I will not comment beyond that because yeah. I don't have any evidence to okay. prove. Yeah. This is all I have heard of such, you know, heavy campaigning of the common candidate, the UMP. Do, would, you, would you prefer for the Chinese embassy to be quite clear? in their statement and say, listen, we did not give the money or, yeah, we did give the money. Uh, they, they issue a statement commenting on the content of the article. But the heart of the matter is that we all would like to know whether they gave the money or not. It, but it, 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 is it the Chinese government or is it a company that had given... It's a, it's, it's a, it's a bit like uh, accepting so, money from the CPC. Because, because it's owned by Sri Lanka, by the government. Because if Sri it is Lanka. the government, of course, then the Chinese embassy has a responsibility. Well, but a, if it is a company, it is a who company has that's owned by the Chinese government. It's a state-owned enterprise. Mm -hmm. So it's the equivalent of any of our state-owned enterprises giving money. Uh, what do you think? Would you would you prefer? To have absolute clarity, the Chinese. If it is uh, uh, enterprise uh, owned by the government, uh, yeah. maybe the Chinese embassy will uh, give a clear account of you know what happened. Would you prefer that? Yes, that would be better. But if it is uh, you know uh, any company uh, in the uh, in China, yeah, I mean uh, they could uh, support the campaign. Maybe for many reasons. Maybe they have already since they are working here. Maybe as a, you know, support. But, you know, Dr. Fernand Pule, the, the, the publication yeah. in the New York Times hmm. is, is not uh, some run-of-the-mill paper. Hmm. Uh, they've been around for a long time, yeah. and I'm sure their owners will want to remain uh, like that in the future, too. So, therefore, uh, do you think that 
Are you all worried that the New York Times may have documentation to substantiate their claims? I think they should have. If not, I mean, you can if always find... Yeah, yeah, if if they didn't, they wouldn't... Uh, what I'm trying to say is yeah. that they wouldn't place their reputation on the line without mm. the documentation. But we never know. You know, with some media, we never know. But it is the New York Times. Yeah. Even, even in New York, you know, things... Can go wrong. Can go wrong, yes. Um, I like to think that the New York Times practices the same kind of uh, veracity and the integrity of journalism like we do here at News First because we do not take a story unless we have the evidence. Of course, we'll report on matters like yeah. here, uh, but that's not for, uh, if we are making a claim, we will have the documentation to support us. Uh, finally, why do you think this country is so... Uh, it appears to be indisciplined. We have strikes, we have uh, people, the, the, the GMOA, we've got the students uh, on the street, um, and uh, people are being inconvenienced, garbage is sometimes not being collected. There appears to be a whole lot of indiscipline going on. Uh, what, what do you think? Uh, you know, on one hand, <coughs> people are also empowered. So they, they fight for their rights. They also uh, protect uh, they, they fight to protect their rights, especially about the university students. Uh, the main issue was the SITAM issue. I think that is already being solved right now. Uh, and also when uh, the people are not getting what they should be getting from the government, so they, they also uh, have they uh, come to the streets and they fight. You know, sometimes people go and force themselves, right, you know, without engaging with discussions. With the people, they go and dump garbage, you know, in unhygienic ways. Then the people uh, in the villages, they, they protect. Uh, because in, um, there are issues in day-to-day -day life. So people, and I'm since people are also empowered, uh, they are fighting for their rights. Uh, so that is, and, and also um, there's freedom. MSC is the freedom uh, to protest and, you know, voice your um, opinions about uh, different issues and again, uh, there are issues with, in governance, so again, people are also uh, voicing their protest against mm -hmm. uh, issues. I, I've got about a minute and a half, two minutes even, uh, and I thought I'd, uh, I'd ask you, Dr. Fernando Pille, from a personal uh, perspective. Um, it's 10 years since uh, your, uh, the demise of your late husband, uh, who's obviously much remembered. How are you coping? Mm, I, of course, miss him yeah. almost every day, every minute, I must yeah. say. Uh, but I uh, continue uh, the work which he left behind. Right. You know, that is why I got into politics, because the people in my electorate, they, they requested me to continue the work which my husband had started and mm. which, which he could not complete. Yeah. So I have been, you know, uh, I have been strong, I must say. Yeah. Uh, I have, I was supported, I am being supported by my children, by my, par my parents, my uh, sister, my in-laws, mm. uh, and I have been sort of continuing the work that my husband left. The Do you feel let down by the people who were paid to protect him? Uh, you know, because, you know, with terrorists, it was very difficult. Even the people who, who were, uh, you know, even though you have hundreds of security guards, if a suicide bomber sort of gets in, yeah. uh, I mean, you can't uh, prevent uh, an assassination, but I'm, I am my my issue is you know the the people the police they they the, the as a suspect the mm. police has been sort of a, a one officer one yeah. one a single person you yeah. can't blame you can't the entire system no yeah. it's an individual who had supported the suicide bomber without an inside support unit it's very difficult for a suicide bomber to infiltrate the security ring. So, uh, of course, yes, the, the, um, the particular person who was supposed to be, who was trying to show that he was close to my husband, mm. uh, let him down and, you know, he had support, that's the uh, information we had, that he had uh, supported the, um, the suicide bomber. He had brought him into that inner circle. 
So that is again uh, according to the information we have. There's a case pending in the High Court. And you derive your strength from, uh, from the legacy of your husband's work? Of course, yes. Uh, the, he's, he's sort of, you know, he was, uh, I learned politics from him. If not, uh, I, would, I would never have been, you know, uh, as a doctor, I would never have... Do you think your children think that you're a, bit, a little bit cuckoo to do politics instead of uh, medicine? Uh, no, they, they were... Uh, so I asked them, I consulted them before I made the decision. They said, no, go ahead and do, otherwise people will forget the father and the work he did. So I think I, I, I have been strong because I have been with him since 86 mm. until he died. So his strong personality sort of influenced my, you know, political career. Dr. Sudarshini Fernandopoli, thank you very much for being on our program. And we look forward to welcoming you on our network. And good luck with whatever you're doing, as long as the people's needs are met. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's the way it was on uh, Monday morning on Newsline. Take care and God bless. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali.